Hello and welcome to the Django Celery Mastery course. Just a quick reminder, if you like this course and would like to access the source code and more, you can access this course on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, is in the video description. Working with the current infrastructure that we have already configured, let's go ahead and have a look at configuring task prioritization. Now, first of all, I'm going to apologize for any confusion at this point. So I have mentioned that Celery has a priority system in respects that we can define tasks with a priority. We can assign a priority to a task zero to nine, and then that can be utilized then to, in the worker to process the task corresponding to its priority. Now, priority can mean many different things and can be set up in many different ways. And you can see from this course that we're going to start off with Redis and then just work through some other task management features, task grouping, chaining, and rate limits. And then we're going to move across from Redis to RabbitMQ. So Salary does not natively support task priority when using Redis as the message broker. Reddit itself does not have a built-in support for task priorities. So if you require task prioritization in Celery, you may consider using a different message broker that supports prioritization, such as RabbitMQ. And we'll take a look at that further along in this course, in this section. So with RabbitMQ, you can configure task priorities and, and Celery will honor them when consuming tasks from the queues. So to use RabbitMQ with Celery, we would need to install RabbitMQ. Of course, we'll do that later on. Right, so what we're gonna do here then is set up with Redis, a, a queue system, so that we can go ahead and define tasks to different queues based upon their priority. So prioritization can mean many different things here. And in Redis, this is how we could potentially set up a prioritization system. So let's imagine that we had an infrastructure in the background. We had four servers that we're going to use for workers. Those servers had a differing amount of uh, technology, a different amount of resource on the server. So we have one server which is very high powered. So if we wanted to process a task very quickly, we would use that particular server. So we would assign maybe Q1 to that particular server. And then we had some other servers which are maybe shared servers or had shared resources. So if we had some lower priority tasks, we might send them to that particular server. So that worker would be set up on that low end server, if you like, and then it could process that. And because it is very much a low end server, it doesn't have much uh, resource processing resource, for example, we would send any low priority task to that server. Okay, so if we go into task routing and uh, we can move down to Redis. Uh, where are we? Uh, the Resid Redis message priorities here in special routing options. And we have this option here to start scheduling tasks based on priorities. Okay, so you need to configure the queue order strategy. So this is what we're going to apply. We're going to set up the queue order strategy priority, and then we're going to use some settings down here to configure different queues automatically. So I'm not suggesting that the documentation is a little bit misleading, but I suppose it's up to interpretation maybe. Uh, but here, let's go ahead and specify app.config. I'll explain what I just said then, or started to say in a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and set the API config uh broker uh, transport options okay so that's going to then equal so we're going to create uh, some priority steps now in the documentation we're told that potentially we can set up priority steps and we can then set that to maybe some sort of a list now remember that we have 10 generally 10 settings zero to nine in salary so we can set this list to a range we set that to 10 to give us 0 to 9. now like it is suggesting in the documentation in actual fact these levels are consolidated into four levels so in actual fact we only end up having four levels so let's go back into 
the options here we'll create some sort of separator just following the code in the documentation almost here so we're going to need a comment out me okay and then let's go ahead and set the queue order now we can do this manually set up these queues manually but we're utilizing this approach so strategy and we're going to set that to priority okay and what we can now do is just remove this line here just comment it out maybe you want to utilize it later but we're going to remove that so what we've done here is we've just created ultimately we've created four queues so those queues will be named celery celery one celery two celery three and that's it okay four queues so what we need to do now is go back into this is apologies i didn't mention where it was uh, in celery uh in our django app celery uh, so let's go back into the docker compose file here uh, so at the moment just going to remove our celery to just comment that out for now so we know we're not working with that for now so we'll go back to our original celery which has the which is coming over the django app here so let's go ahead and change this so what we're saying now is we've just created four celery queues so celery celery one celery two celery three there we go oh, apologies there we go so we've simply just created these four queues now of course we're assigning these queues to this one worker but the general idea here is that we may have other workers on other machines and we would obviously assign those queues to those different machines so the really high powered server we could assign that to in this case it would be q1 it would just be uh, celery so that's the highest level in this case now do be careful here when you're defining these different queues so there shouldn't be a space so you saw previously we had a space here so i've removed the space so do make sure that you remove that space otherwise the celery worker won't start now you don't have to start celery at this point but if you were this is what you're going to see you can see now i've created the new celery work with these settings and we now have these four queues so let's go back into the new app tasks let's create some more new tasks let's so we'll just get rid of those for now let's go ahead and create a new task so i'm going to call this tp1 uh, so i'm going to add the queue to this task so i'm going to sign this task to the queue that's something different we've not yet introduced so this will be celery one so i'll just create a few of these for natural facts so two and then three so i just need to rename the, the task as well so because it's four three two and one okay so notice i'm also using time sleep so we'll just add a little bit of a delay there so i've imported time just to kind of simulate the idea of it taking a couple of seconds to complete okay so let's go ahead and rebuild so I'll go ahead and rebuild everything again just double check everything is fine when it restarts okay so everything comes up okay we've got celery uh, looks like everything is as expected we have the four queues this is obviously just on the one worker okay and you can see actually we have also registered our tasks okay so let's uh go into the open up a new shell here going to up a new terminal inside the django docker container let's go ahead and manage.py let's go into the shell and then we just need to import some resources okay so from new app tasks let's go ahead and import tp1 two three and four now in the command files here i've just created a few lines so i can fire off multiple tasks now we will find in the next couple of tutorials there are different approaches for creating group tasks so we can group up tasks and trigger them all at once for example and you've probably also seen the following tutorial chaining so we'll have a look at that as well so let's just copy and paste that in and then the last one let's go back to celery here you can see that it has received all those tasks so in terms of prioritization in terms of when or in what order sorry the tasks are actually processed there's not really much to see here in terms of prioritization we can see that all the tasks have been lined up 
and then we can go ahead and see them being processed underneath here. So we can see which task has been processed and it's pretty much first in first out order. So there's nothing, like I said, there really to discuss in terms of uh, prioritization, in terms of task prioritization in, the or in what order they are actually executed in each queue. Remember here that this setup was about, think about having different resources and prioritizing those tasks so that they are fed or they are sent or they are processed, sorry, by the individual workers associated to particular prioritizations. In our scenario, we are suggesting that Celery here, that's the highest prioritization and Celery 3 is the lowest prioritization. And we've seen that we can actually now pass in additional information into the task. So here you can see we've set up the shared task and we passed in the queue that we want to utilize for that particular task. Whereas in the previous tutorial, we set up the tasks and queues manually. 